Hey everybody, Forever DM here. Uh, it's been a little bit. Uh, I've actually been playing in a game as well as running another game, so that's kind of been taking up a lot of my time. But I wanted to take a moment to talk to all of you again about uh, something that has just really overhauled uh, my campaign. And um, one of the players in my game is actually the DM of the game that I'm playing in, in on the other day of the week. And uh, he also uh, really enjoyed the, um, the idea as well and is implementing uh, this idea into his game as well. Uh, so what that is, is, um, well, uh, let's, let's, let's put up a scenario first. Uh, magic items, right? So, obviously, when you're playing Dungeons & Dragons, when you create your character, there are certain magic items that you're going to want for your specific character, right? So why not allow your players to get those certain magic items that they want? Now, obviously, there is going to be a specific power creep that may or may not happen because if it's an item that they want, usually it's the reason they want it is because it's specifically advantageous for someone like them to get it. Uh, if the fighter is specifically looking for like a flame tongue, yeah, um, they're going to be really, really good at fighting now because of that. Um, you give the rogue uh, anything that helps them with their stealth checks or damage. Again, it's going to make them significantly better at what they do, and challenges are going to make them uh, quite easy to come across. The wizard, you give them anything that grants them additional spell slots or uh, makes their DC checks higher, like a Wand of the War Mage, something like that. Um, yes, it's going to significantly make encounters easier for them. So, how do you come across being able to balance encounters, um, you know, an aspect you need to do as part of being a dungeon master, but also rewarding your players with things that they actually want to make their build shine? Um, so the way you balance that is with this. And with that is side quests. Let them go to a specific um, magic items dealer. or um, So the way I'm uh, running it in my campaign is uh, literally a black market um, shady businessman that knows how to get anything that anybody wants, uh, whether through good means or bad means, uh, depending on how the players want that to happen whether uh, uh, they're good or bad, uh, you know, uh, lawful, chaotic, um, you know, he can, he can procure them. Uh, if they want, um, you know, it done the moral way, well, they might have to pay a little extra coin because he has to do it, you know, rightfully. Whereas if they don't care how he gets it, eh, they might uh, get it pretty cheap, but they might you know, tick off a certain someone who is the rightful owner of said item um, and might put in a little uh, great plot hooks that pop up. So just some really cool things that you can do with that. Um, but the way I'm implementing it is uh, with side quests. Um, for example, hey, I know where... Um, this, uh, for example, in my campaign, we know that we're going to be facing a dragon soon. So one of my players specifically requested to find a dragon slaying sword uh, so that they could be very effective against that dragon. Sure. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, when they go off to try and find this sword, well, this is that great moment where you get to, if you have a really great dungeon idea, or a really great combat encounter, or anything that just doesn't feel like it makes sense in your campaign, 
this is what those moments are for. You can have a really great encounter that kind of feels like it's not in any place. Um, that doesn't feel like it's organic to the story that you're building for your campaign. And this is that time where it's like, yeah, it might not feel organic. But this is the, mo the most great time that it's, it's going to be where you'd want to put that in. Because now that weird thing that you've set up has now become a, hey, if we do this, I know I'm going to get my item that I requested. And that, that's where that's for. Um, so just give your players a quest to go and specifically get the things that they want. Or, even better, if someone's proficient with artisan's tools, specifically like smith's tools or leatherworker's tools or something like that, let them uh, figure out the uh, recipe or plans or wh whatever to be able to craft whatever sort of thing that they want to make, but they have to go out and gather specific materials. If someone wants to create um, uh, elven, uh, you know, slippers of, uh, I'm, I'm blanking out right now, but the, the slippers that give you uh, advantage on stealth checks. Um, you know, let them go out on a quest to go find the specific ingredients, you know, the the hide of a hydra and, you know, the eye of um, a cyclops and, you know, something like that or whatever. And uh, they have to gather all these ingredients together to be able to stitch them to make the, the item that they're trying to create. And it becomes its own quest line. That way you can give them this combat so you don't just say, oh, you, you get your item now, and there you go. They have to spend time, energy, fight things, possibly get, you know, uh, attacked, get into a dangerous situation, and get rewarded for that dangerous encounter to get the thing that they were looking for. It's a great way to reward your players, and in a specific way, because uh, something that I struggle with as a dungeon master is sometimes I don't know what to give my players. If they have a particularly hard combat encounter, sometimes I feel I might give out a magic item that I think they might enjoy, but might not necessarily be something that they would want. So... Asking them, saying, hey, what do you want? Um, and I was actually quite surprised. One of my players wanted an immovable rod. That's one of the items that they requested. I wouldn't have thought that that would be something that was high on their list of things that they would specifically request for. But hey, uh, great. Now that I know that, we went on a quest to go get an immovable rod. And that was what their rewarded item was. And we ended up having a very fun encounter. Um, and that specific player got rewarded for something that he requested. And he knew it was for him because the item was his. So, and again, it solves another issue of who gets the item. Well, we know who got the item because it was his item that he requested. So we know it goes to him because it was, you know player one's item that he wanted. It, it just works out that way. So it's it's a great way to um, reward your players, and I just couldn't help but pass that along to you guys to hopefully um, help you in your games um, with that information. Uh, I hope you use that information well, and I hope your games are better because of it. Uh, thanks for listening.